Hi everyone, uh, thanks for joining. Uh, we'll give people another two minutes to dial in and then we'll go ahead and get started. Thanks. Okay, why don't we uh, go ahead and get started then. Uh, hello everyone and, and welcome to the USA Technologies Micromarkets webinar. Uh, I'm Adrian Austin, I'm the Product Marketing Manager here at USAT and today we'll focus on the ways to accelerate uh, revenue growth in your market. Uh, thanks for joining us. Before we get started, I wanted to go over some basic guidance uh, on the webinar today. Uh, you'll see on the right-hand side of the screen of the GoToMeeting uh, go meeting uh, questions box. Here you can list any questions that you have for our speakers today. And at the end of the presentation, we'll take some time to answer as many of the questions as we can. So feel free to post at any time. Uh, if there's any questions that we don't get to during the presentation, uh, we'll do our best to reach out to you guys afterwards to give you guys, uh, give you guys answers. So today's webinar is being presented by Alan Lewin, our product manager here at USA Technologies, and Bradley Whitson, uh, operation manager at KNR Services. So Alan has been with the company for over 13 years, working with working in the product management team uh, to help define the product roadmap and consistently work with operators to continually improve uh, our seed product. Since joining the organization in 2004, Alan's held several roles across multiple parts of our organization, including our operations, support, field service, implementation, IT, and engineering, uh, and even has done his fair share of time writing in the back of delivery trucks. So he's done, done it all. All these experiences have, uh, have proven to be invaluable in helping for him to understand and build solutions uh, for our vending operators. So welcome, Alan. Thank you. And then for Bradley, Bradley has been uh, over 11 years at K&R Services, uh, and he manages the day-to-day -day operations uh, and is responsible for developing short and long-term strategies for growth and efficiency across all areas of the business, uh, including purchasing, customer service, routes, warehouse management, and account installation. Uh, significant focus is giving us a company to company-wide implementation of groundbreaking industry technology to include K&R's 10-plus routes, 46 plus micro markets and more than 1,200 machines. So welcome, Bradley. Thanks, my pleasure to be here. So what will we cover today? So in, in today's webinar, we're going to be going over a, a quick overview of the seed platform, a uh, quick overview of our general products that we have to offer, and then we'll be moving on to the challenges that we're seeing many operators face uh, with micro markets and the five ways that we've seen operators really help to accelerate growth at their micro markets. Um, then Alan will take us through a walkthrough demo of the seed, mar of the seed market's product and show us some best practices to managing various issues uh, that we'll discuss. Then we'll have Bradley discuss in a little bit more detail about K&R and the results that they've been seeing after the implementation of seed uh, into their market management. Uh, lastly, Alan will recap some of the key takeaways uh, of micro markets and best practices uh, and best practices for implementation. And then we'll open it up to some Q&A. And all right, so I'm going to be handing it over to Alan and Bradley now, and I hope you guys enjoy. All right, and good morning, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, this is Alan from uh, USA Technologies. So here's just a quick overview of what our uh, product portfolio uh, entails. Starting all the way on the left with seed caches in Epor Connect. Essentially, uh, we we process payments for uh, vending machines kiosks, micro markets, massage chairs, air and vacuum machines, jukeboxes, you name it, uh, through ePort Connect and Seed Cashless. And we also uh, offer a loyalty and promotions platform with the More Card and the ability to push content um, like uh, advertisements to your vending machines through the ePort Interactive. Next, we have Seed Office, which is our VMS. It's the back end system that operators use to run financial reporting, generate commissions and taxes manage their warehouse, like generating uh, purchase orders, receiving products in, tracking inventory, and running their product accountability reports, to managing the running to their money room, uh, counting cash that the drivers are bringing back from the field, and running accountability reports there. And with C Spotlight, be able to build uh, custom reports on demand. Next, we have C Pro, which is our uh, logistics and analytics platform. 
uh, where we got our name in, in the industry around where to go, when to go, what to take. So the concept of dynamic scheduling, pre-kitting, and using all the information to help you make smarter decisions to run your business. Next, we have key delivery, which is our OCS and pantry uh, management module. So essentially, we're taking uh, this to the 21st century with a modern platform with tablets, smartphones, and electronic invoices instead of managing the business using paper and pen. And finally, what you all are here for today is about seed markets. Essentially, using everything we learned for the past 15 years, all the products that we built over on the left, to help operators better manage uh, their micro market businesses today. So, there are a couple of challenges we've heard from operators over the past couple of years since micro markets have been, um, been growing uh, a good amount. Starting with, it's taking the drivers forever to take inventory. So Bradley, how, how long before you, you started using seed market did, did your drivers take to uh, inventory entire market? Yeah, our average market took a, a little over an hour to do an inventory. And we were doing right. them uh, every market at least once a month. And then others we had some, uh, that had some uh, increased shrink issues we do as frequently as, as once a week. All right, and then another thing that we've heard from the field is that they're, they're having to use multiple systems to manage their market business, all right? So on one hand, say they're already uh, running seed for their vending and, and OCS side of the house. They're having to log into Smart HQ to manage the 365 market. They're having to log into AMS to manage their Avani markets. They're having to log in Catapult for revisions, ECRS, and Business Track for their company kitchens, right? So they have, they're having to go back and forth between multiple systems on a day-to-day -day basis just to do something as simple as generate the orders for each market and send it out through the suite. Another challenge has been because they're spending all this time taking inventory, spending all this time just with the overhead managing different systems, they're not able to take the time aside and focus on making better decisions using the data that, that's provided through, um, through the market, through the different systems. And finally, uh, costs are generally stored in the VMS, right? So in order to be able to get a big picture of how, uh, of how an, an operator is running or a, a, whether or not a customer is profitable, it's taking a lot of time having to go through uh, running uh, manual reports in Excel, doing pivot tables, VLOOKUPs and everything to just see a simple P&L for a customer. So Bradley, what, what have you been doing in the past for to be able to see whether or not one of your accounts is really profitable? Yeah, that, this was a, you know kind of our largest overarching problem here was we were taking so much time to put data together from different systems, like you said, dumping it in Excel tables, creating pivot charts that instead of actually being able to spend time analyzing my data, I was spending my time trying to compile everything and get it together. And then realized by the time that was done, I had to move on to the next thing and I wasn't able to truly step back look at my business, see what's going on and what I can, what I can improve. All right. Yeah. So one, so one thing we've heard all along is really, why can't I use the same tools to manage market markets as I'm already using for my bank side of the business? All right. So what would it be nice if you're able to do the same exact thing that you're doing for vending with markets? So we'll talk a little bit about that coming up here, but how, how can we help operators better scale uh, growth in their micro markets area. So one is, uh, we touched on a little bit earlier, one of the challenges is taking inventories, right? Right now, if you're having to, operators are taking inventories for entire market at, um, at once, all your coolers, all your snack bags, beverage coolers, your food coolers, and as Bradley said, it takes about 45 minutes to an hour um, each time for, uh, for driver to inventory the entire market. Now, wouldn't it be nicer if, you only have to inventory certain areas of the market, like a food cooler at once or just one snack panel at once, as opposed to inventorying every single time uh, you're there. And additionally, uh, you should have a barcode scanner. If your driver handheld was able to scan the product, that will let your driver uh, take inventory a little bit faster. Next is around scheduling. So what, what if you're able to use the same dynamic scheduling tools uh, to service markets? So instead of having to, to fill all the beverage coolers and all the snack racks and all the food coolers at the same time, 
what if you only had to fill one out of two beverage coolers and skip the food cooler this time because there's still enough product there and then skip one of the snack racks. I guess over, it's just, just like um, the concept of uh, dime scheduling when we uh, introduced it with vending where you're no longer touching every single machine in the bank of vending machines, uh, you could apply that same concept to scheduling micromarkets. Next is what visibility do you need to scale, right? So from literally photo audits, being able to see in the system how a market section or a market cooler or a snack rack is laid out in the system. Or just what uh, Bradley was saying, being able to go in under one roof and generate a P&L with a couple clicks, as opposed to having to go around exporting all these reports to Excel and combining them manually. Next, as Bradley was also talking about, he's spending a lot more time, a lot of time just manually putting reports together. He's not able to find the time to focus on making sure that his markets are merchandised properly. And finally, around consumer engagement. So being like implementing a low, a low FC program like US Connect or the More Card, being able to show uh, advertisements like uh, with light speed vision on screens around your market and just setting up promotions like a buy one get one free um, for uh, for folks that that buy a product from your from your markets. Yeah, I I, I that, kind of put another way the, the the challenge that we were facing and that we want to do is we had all these great tools that Cantaloupe had developed on the vending side a more efficient way to vend a more efficient way to merchandise to get products into the machines to allow our drivers to quickly service machines. We were just really wishing I could leverage and do those same sort of procedures and workflows and that technology uh, on the market side so I can gain the efficiencies in markets that I gained in, in the vending that Canopy provided to me years ago. All right. So speaking of that, let's just segue into a quick walkthrough of Steve Markets here. So once you see this, it's pretty straightforward if you're familiar with, with, with what Steve does. Essentially, what we do with Steve Markets is split out every single area or section of your market as a separate um, as a separate asset in seed. So just like, unlike a, uh, a bank vending machine, you have your food coolers, you have your beverage coolers, and you have your snack racks. Each of those different sections will be a different asset here in seed. So then just drilling down into uh, a uh, beverage cooler here, you can see that it's essentially set up the same way as a glass one soda machine. So you have your selections for each product, your current inventory levels, how much is sold since the last time the driver was there, and the car and capacity levels you fill up to, along with the price of the product that you want to sell through the market. And talking about uh, the photo audit earlier, you can see right here, you have Dr. Pepper on the front over here. You have Diet Dr. Pepper next, then Fanta or, or uh, Sunkist Orange, Sunkist Grape, and so forth. So you're essentially setting your your snack racks and your coolers up just like you would a traditional vending machine in seed. And here's just a quick example of snack rack. You can see from the picture here, you have Black Forest mixed fruit melody snacks here, and Swedish fish, and peanuts. Scrolling down to the second shelf here, Lotus Spunkmeyer. Um, looks like it's out of stock. And uh, you have your Chips Ahoy followed by Oreos. All right, so it's pretty straightforward. You're doing the same exact thing we're allowing operators to manage the planograms uh, with their markets just in the same exact fashion that they're managing the vending machines today. Steve. Next is around scheduling. So what our, uh, our dynamic scheduling allows you to do is schedule machines, micro markets, and OCS all at once. So each of these little boxes is either a vending machine, an OCS delivery point, or micro market section. So those of you who are already uh, seed operators running diamond scheduling for a vending side of business, it'll just look, it, the different sections of the micro market will look exactly like a, a vending machine here in scheduling. And you could schedule all the different sections of the market independently. So like I said earlier, you can go through and just uh, select one or two beverage coolers instead of all three or four, one snack rack instead of two, and so forth. And what that allows you to do is split out if you want to either run dedicated market routes 
or if you want your vending driver to service the snack and soda while you have a dedicated food driver servicing your, your food, it just gives you a lot more flexibility into how you want to manage your business. And next is your driver handheld. So just like uh, co the common theme is, it's exactly the same as what you would see for vending, all right? So here's a list of your different mar uh, market sections on the left here, and then pull, once your driver pulls up, say a food cooler here, they're able to service an inventory uh, just like they are a vending machine, but notice they're not able to collect because technically you're not collecting from the cooler. That's over here on the right where you pull up the kiosk for collection and enter in your, your money bag or your bag number there as well. And that'll just show up in uh, the coin counter app, just like any of any normal uh, any normal bag for your vending machine. And then on the next page, uh, when you run your accountability reporting at the bottom here, you're able to tell what your driver was supposed to bring back, um, just like what you're already doing with your, your bill changers and your vending machines. And on the top here is just a uh, quick and dirty um, customer P&L by line of business. So you're able to see how exactly your, how profitable your markets are doing versus vending at the same customer versus OCS at the same customer. So now that we did a quick walkthrough of seed markets, uh, Bradley, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and uh, k and vending? Yeah, thanks, Alan. So we were uh, founded in 1978. We're located in Southern New Jersey. We do uh, Southern New Jersey, Delaware, and parts of Pennsylvania. Uh, we've been doing, um, you know, we've been with Cantaloupe since 2011. Uh, probably about four or five years ago, we actually had taken our first jump into micro markets then. Uh, we've now got 48 of them out and uh, a little over 1,200 vending machines. So we've been pretty heavy with uh, Cantaloupe using the platform Seed Pro Seed Office and have really enjoyed doing it. And like I was starting to reference earlier, we were running these micro markets and we were running into the challenge where it was taking so much time, uh, energy, labor, and all that equates to cost. To, to properly operate these. Uh, you know, we knew we had a lot of efficiency on the vending side. We had gotten efficiency on the uh, office coffee delivery side, but we really hadn't gotten this market efficiency yet. And we were just throwing a lot of labor, a lot of time in running reporting, in doing inventories, in managing markets. And we felt we were doing all that. We weren't just making money with it. And so we were trying to find a better way to do it. And that's when we uh, came along, we were able to find seed markets. All right. So let's talk a little bit about the uh, results you've uh, you've uh, you've uh, gotten from seed markets. Yeah. So uh, you know, one one of the biggest uh, you know one of the, the, the immediate impacts that we got out of it was that um, it sped up our drivers' time of service by uh, the markets considerably. Uh, now that we're treating a market as individual segments as we're pre-kitting for the market, we're able to put the drinks to go there to go. Uh, specifically for that beverage cooler uh, or the snacks that go for that particular micro market snack panel. So the big advantage of that was our drivers weren't forced to open up a box, hunt around, find a product, walk back and forth through the market. They could be potentially be going to the main snack area, then having to walk over to the, you know, you know, freestanding healthy display and then go back over to the micro market stand where we have some impulse buy items. They were getting a tote for the items that were needed uh, in exactly the segment where they were standing. So it dramatically sped up how quickly they were able to inventory markets. No, so your driver is no longer having to run around, hunt around where products certainly go or they're supposed to go in. Oh, that could spend a lot of time just running back and forth between different coolers and different snack panels, huh? Yeah, exactly. We have one, one of our markets is actually 80 feet long and the amount of trips our drivers make back and forth oh. to fill it is is amazing. So this is one of the first quickest wins that our drivers felt when we rolled this out. Got it. Okay. Yes. Yeah, so and the next thing we found was uh, it, it allowed us to stay on top of the shrinkage, uh, you know, you know, much more quickly and easily. Like I said before, when you're going to do an inventory, uh, it took our drivers, uh, you know, around an hour at times, a little bit more than an hour to do a full market inventory. And so because of that, we would have some difficulties in how long it would take. You know, by the time the driver does that inventory that we get back, we process the information. You know, it might be a while before we truly found out uh, how long or how big of a shrinkage issue we have. By getting uh, continual periodic and quick inventories done now, you know, our drivers do an inventory as they're dealing with that one micro market segment, that just that one snack panel or just that one 
beverage cooler. It's so much faster now that our drivers, if they were to do a full inventory, are able to get an entire market done in about 15 or 20 minutes. So it's been a huge time saving. So we're able to get more um, inventory information and see if we have a shrink problem. Because one of the things that we found is most people, uh, generally speaking, want to be honest. There's always some uh, you know, bad weeds out there that no matter what are going to, to steal when given the opportunity. And you know, this allows us to get the information and present it back to the HR department so they can be dealt with. But most people, generally speaking, want to be honest. And if they see that people who are, are breaking the rules and stealing from the markets are being dealt with, they'll be honest and not steal. So we felt it was very important to get these quick inventories, get this information, get this data so that we we're able to turn around and stay on top of the problems before they became a big problem to help keep those honest people honest. Got it. So that totally makes sense. So you went from 45 minutes to an hour to um, inventory entire market down to 15 mark or 15 minutes. And that's only when you have to inventory the entire market, right? Like on a day-to-day -day basis, your drivers are just spending a couple minutes per section only when those sections are called for service or for called for inventory, right? Yep, exactly. The, the length of time it takes to do a micro market snack panel or a door of a drink cooler is, is just about the same, if not a little bit less than doing a traditional vending machine. Got it. That makes sense. Okay. Yes. Yeah. So then also, you know, another big win, especially, uh, you know, back here in the office was getting all reporting under one roof. Um, yeah, I kind of referenced it earlier. We spent so much time going back and forth between uh, different systems to calculate information to try to create P&Ls. We found like we were spending all of our time creating reports and not actually to spend time analyzing the data. So having everything, you know, uh, under one roof really allowed us to quickly and easily leverage Spotlight get reporting together so we could actually start acting on the data and making informed decisions uh, to try to make our customers more profitable. So how much time were you spending before to, uh, to generate these, these reports manually? Yeah, it was, I, I don't even want to share how much time it took. It's almost embarrassing having to pull all the different uh, pieces together from the various systems and try to put it into a pivot table and then discover you misaligned a column and now you're starting all over again. But it was, uh, you know, countless hours were saved by being able to do this. All right. Okay. You know, and, and kind of the, one, one, one of the last, uh, and, and kind of the, um, you know, one of the cooler results were that I didn't have to have my managers and supervisors spend so much time um, chasing after doing inventories. You know, when it takes over an hour to do a market, it's not something I can routinely ask my drivers to do. Uh, so if we had any sort of shrinkage issues or suspected there could be problems, you managers out there to do full inventories and to keep checking it. And managers are spending a large chunk of their week just doing inventories and spot checking and things like that. And because of that, uh, by not having to do that anymore, because inventory time went so much faster, I could actually have my supervisors and managers do what they're supposed to do and be out there with their drivers, be in the markets, making sure we're providing a good product, making sure that the customer's experience was a great experience, and working on ways we can help grow both top and bottom line revenue. And, and on the same note, like the, um, the photo audit functionality in Seed Mobile, like we, we saw a couple of slides back where you're able to take a, uh, a picture of the different sections of your market, the different areas of your market, you don't have to send your, your manager or your supervisor out there anymore just to make sure that your driver is doing what they're, they're supposed to be doing, right? You know, that's a great point, Alan. That photo audit is one of the first things that we default to now. If we get a call, if there's a question, if there's an issue, if we're wondering how a driver is doing, we immediately bring up the photos, see it, and can say, okay, look, this is how this looked when our driver left, so it did look good. Or, hey, you know, perhaps we need to go back and coach this driver a little bit more because I'm not quite happy with how it was merchandised when he was done and leaving. It's been a great tool to have. All right. So you're able to just see what's going, uh, see what's going on in the field with all your markets and all your machines and everything just with the click of a button, right? Yep, exactly. Okay. All right. So now that we covered a little bit about what, uh, what K&R has experienced with the market, let's just go ahead and just review what we covered on, uh, on the call earlier. It's just around the five different things to help you uh, scale a micro market, right? First is inventory smarter, not harder, right? Instead of inventorying the entire market at a time, just inventory the different sections, right? So don't inventory all five five coolers or two snack panels. Just inventory one or two uh, every single time the driver's there, and then use a barcode scanner uh, whenever uh, it's appropriate for the driver to in the driver handheld to make it a little bit faster for them to take inventory physically. 
Uh, next is around scheduling. Uh, using dynamic scheduling, so you're not touching the entire market, you're only touching the section of the market that needs service. Finally, next is uh, visibility. Uh, spend less time, as uh, Bradley was talking about, you used to spend hours upon hours just uh, manually finagling Excel spreadsheets. Now you're, you're able to just run P&L reporting, financial reporting with click a couple buttons and spend the time actually analyzing data to help manage your, better manage your business. Uh, yeah, speaking of which, story on, yeah. a, a quick little story on that, that, you know, we had had a customer that uh, they're, you know, their vending business was uh, starting to stagnate and, and, and kind of start to, you know, to, to dwindle down. And, um, you know, it was one of the things where my route manager was making a decision whether we should pull the vending machines. And thankfully, they ran the integrated reporting. And what the person didn't realize was how strongly both the office coffee and the micro market segments were performing. And if they had just looked at an old traditional VMS uh, report to just show vending or just show micro market, um, they would have missed the whole big picture of what was happening there. And we might have made a poor decision it would have cost us what was otherwise a profitable customer. All right. No, that's a really good point. That's a good save. Okay. And then around merchandising, right? It's a, it's a balancing act. You need to carry the right balance of products to optimize not only service, so how often you're, you're going to the market to fill it and clean it up, and to meet consumer demands and variety. Right, so going back to, uh, to dynamic scheduling, you want to make sure you're, you're stocking the right products so that uh, all your top sellers aren't completely empty, so you're losing out of products. At the same time, you want to make sure that your, your customers, your consumers are feeling that you're offering the variety that they're looking for. And finally, with consumer engagement, just look for a loyalty program that you can implement that allow you to engage with the consumers, offer promotions, um, run, uh, run ads on, uh, certain uh, specials for the week and so forth. Great. All right. Hey, thanks, Alan and Bradley, for, for presenting and sharing your, your experiences and insights. Looks like we're going to have some great time for, for Q&A uh, for whoever uh, sent any questions in. Uh, while we're gearing up and, and pulling the questions that you guys presented, uh, Bradley, I actually had a question uh, that I was thinking of while we were presenting is, uh, you know, how does your process at Market Markets for handling food, whether it's fresh or prepackaged or frozen, uh, you know, how is it at your market? Maybe is it different from any of your food vending machines? Maybe you can share some insight on that. Yes, that's a great question. Um, you know, we, we have, you know, within our markets, uh, my company has their own commissaries who make their own uh, fresh food daily. That's obviously a large part of micro markets. You know, I believe the industry standard is about 35% percent of sales in micro markets are coming from, uh, you know, fresh fruit and refrigerated products, which is considerably larger than vending. So it's important to kind of keep on top of that. Uh, one of the things that we then do is uh, we are using a cycle menu here for fresh food. You know, it's great in Seed Mobile. Our drivers are using the uh, handheld scanner. So they're able to scan those sandwiches as they're putting them in the coolers. So we're able to continue to leverage our cycle menu and a, a quite a bit of variety in there. What we've also then found too is we supplement that with some, some prepackaged food. And what we do is we find there's some people who don't necessarily want the variety, but want to know that we're always going to have a chicken sandwich or always going to have a cheeseburger or a hot pocket or something available. So what we do in those cases, we actually set them up, um, you know, directly in cantaloupe as a product. We have a par level and depletion for those items. So as they're being purchased, the system is automatically uh, restocking and sending back those items. So those kind of favorite things are always there and available for our customers. We feel between the two of them, we're able to give a nice blend of food. Got it. Yeah, that makes sense. Is that, is it, so specifically, are you seeing yourself having to handle them differently than, than your vending machine, than your vending machine that, that supply food? Like are there new challenges that you happen to see in, in the markets or are you... You know, is it, you're able to use some of the, the tools that Seed Markets is able to enable for micro markets, similar to the way that you handle in the vending. Yeah, so I mean, obviously, one of the big things is, uh, you know, by getting to set up those depletion levels, uh, you know, we're able to keep those items and, and dialed in there and keep the, the levels, uh, you know, pretty consistent there. So, you know, we're not having uh, as much waste. We're able to control that a little bit better. You know, by being able to scan the products in there in Seed Mobile 2, uh, we can offer quite a bit more variety, you know, in a typical micro market. And people like that variety and they buy some of those non traditional items. So, having the flexibility to both scan the products as well as have them ordered by, uh, you know, a par level and depletion has been great to, to provide all that variety for our customers. 
Got it. Great. Yes. Uh, thanks, Bradley. So next uh, next question that uh, somebody sent in: uh, How often and what process for collecting the kiosk? So what we do for uh, collecting the kiosk is we actually, and I think Alan might have had a slide on there that, that, that briefly touched on it. You schedule the kiosk as one of the segments of your micro market. So as we break down the snack panels in the section and the drink coolers in the section, uh, we schedule a kiosk as one of those sections that come up. And so it's great, you as the operator have the flexibility of deciding how often you wanna collect that kiosk. It might be the sort of thing that it's difficult to get the money out of the kiosk or it's uh, considerably, uh, you know, most of the sales are cashless sales as we tend to see a lot of times in micro markets. Um, you could set it to have a longer service interval and go, you know, every every three weeks on a, a, a you know a, a flexible schedule, um, or just tag it along with other sections as you're going to service it. But then when it comes up in the handheld, it comes up there as a machine for the driver because it's in the handheld. The drivers that know how to collect it, just like we can with the rest of Cantaloupe, we can enter the uh, the bag details. You can scan the bag uh, and then send it through for your money room. And then within the money room, they're going to count it the same way they do a bill changer. And it's going to come up in reporting for you to make sure that you're seeing the correct cash coming back compared to what you expected. Got it. And then just a follow-up question of that. So, uh, so how often, I guess, a little bit unrelated, how often are you inventorying your markets now um, as opposed to uh, as opposed to before? So what, what we're doing now is um, it, it's it's similar to what we do in. Uh, in vending, we service or we have an inventory done every fourth visit is what we're currently on. So every fourth time we're doing one of the uh, segments, so every fourth time we're doing a snack panel, we'll inventory that snack panel. So it's not that it's once a month is a big inventory day when a driver is going into a market, similar to if they're going into a break room with a number of vending machines, they may have one or two of them that they're going to inventory and a couple that they're not. Same thing here. We may have one or two snack panels that we're inventorying and the drink cooler that we're not. But on average, we're doing about every fourth, uh, fourth service, which generally means at least once a month, uh, we should have a whole big picture of how a market's looking. Okay. Got it. That makes sense. So, so Bradley, a big topic that usually comes up with micro markets, especially when compared to vending, is you know, the topic of shrinkage. A lot of concern that the, the rates are higher. Uh, and the question is, because you ran micro markets quite a bit before you implemented seed, but how has micro markets, or sorry, how has seed markets changed the way you've, you've handled shrinkage in the past? Are there any new tools you, you've had to either report on it or to prevent it now that you, you fully implement it? Yeah, so one of the things, you know, prior to using seed markets, we would inventory a market once a month and, and, and kind of talking about how it would normally go. You'd get that inventory as the data comes back to you. You might think there was a shrinkage problem or maybe you started to see it go a little bit higher, but you know, you would wait, you'd get to the next month where you'd inventory it again. And then by the time you realize that there actually truly was an issue, it's been maybe two, two and a half months since the issue might have started. And then you've got to go in there and it's a larger issue. You're going to pull the DVR. You're going to see all the uh, the footage and you're going to have to go to the HR department and present all these people who are potentially caught, you know, stealing from the micro market. It becomes a headache for everyone involved. You know, one of the great things for us now is that as our drivers are servicing it, we're getting those inventories done every fourth time. We're starting to get a lot quicker picture of when there might be a problem. So we're seeing much more quickly if trends are changing after a few services instead of after a few months. So we're able to get out there proactively to our customers and say, hey, we're starting to notice some issues here. You know, one of the things my company likes to do is, um, you know, we'll actually put signs up in our micro market saying something along the lines of, hey, we've noticed, uh, you, know, you know, some shrinkage of, you know, the following items and then please shop responsibly to keep prices down for everyone. And so we're finding by getting out there more quickly before the problem has gotten out of hand, we can kind of leverage peer pressure. We can leverage the fact that they realize we're looking, we're checking these things um, to help stop the problem before it becomes a massive problem. It's going to cost a lot of people their jobs and a lot of headaches for everyone. Yeah, no, that, I, I think that's actually really interesting because, you know, one of the biggest hassles has to be going and dealing with the HR at a company that, you know, that takes up, you know, valuable time that you could be, I think you mentioned the, in earlier in the presentation, focusing on, you know, actually, you know, improving the business, whether that's cutting costs to improve bottom line or, you know, doing things like better product merchandising to improving top line. So that's great that it allows you to kind of focus more on, you know, the, the business side of the business. 
Yeah, that's exactly it. We didn't we didn't want our supervisors and managers to have to spend so much time just chasing after problems and trying to put out fires and actually be able to step back and take a concentrated look at what are we doing, what could we be doing better, what could we do to increase our margins and provide a better product to our customers. And this has started to free up their time so that they're able to do that. Awesome. So another question is uh, coming in about uh, scheduling and routes. So are, are all your vending and routes mixed? Uh, or are some still staying as dedicated? So um, what, what we had done prior to uh, seed markets, we had operated two routes, or two types of routes. We had our uh, dynamic routes where we scheduled uh, using Cantaloupe's easier scheduling, where we had all of our uh, soda machines and snack machines. And then we had our static routes, which were our food machines. And since we have our own commissary here, um, you know, we have to have a little bit of uh, consistency as to when we're going and how many pieces we need to make sure we can make that food. So our static routes are where our entire micro markets went. So our static drivers were also doing the food coolers, the drink panels, or the drink coolers, the snack panels, and everything. By rolling this out and making the workflow for the drivers in terms of how they fill it and how they service it and approach a micro market segment very similar to a vending machine, we've actually now split that back out. So we still have our static drivers uh, going to service the food cooler within the micro market um, so they can still do that on a consistent basis so our commissary can make the food necessary. But we've been able to take all these snack panels and drink coolers and move those into uh, or onto our dynamic route. Um, so now those are people who can come, we can schedule much more efficiently, go only when it's necessary, make sure we're, we're maximizing the impact of that route driver's time. Uh, so all the snack panels, all the drink coolers, and all of that has moved on to our dynamic routes. Awesome. Thanks for sharing. Thanks for sharing, Bradley. Uh, so I think we're, we're running right to the end of the presentation. Uh, Thanks everyone for presenting and people that joined in. Uh, anyone that uh, we didn't get to their questions today, we will follow up with you on email to help answer you and give you guys answers. Uh, hopefully by the end of today, latest by tomorrow. Uh, I just want to say thank you again to Alan and Bradley. I really appreciate you guys taking the time. Uh, for everyone else, we'll be sending out a link to the recording of this webinar in case you'd like to share it. Uh, with someone that wasn't able to attend. Also, people that weren't able to attend today will be sharing that out so you can uh, watch offline as well. Uh, anyway, I want to say thanks again, and thank you very much for joining, and look forward to speaking with any, any of you that have more questions soon. All right, thank you very much. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, everyone.